What's going on everybody? It's Jay here. Sorry it's been a little while since I've been uploading my videos. There's been a lot going on in the world as you all know and I've had a lot of personal changes as well. Still working on the house though and I have a gigantic backlog of video at this point to catch you guys up on. I'm going to do my best to start uploading those consistently. For a while I didn't have a good space to work on the editing but we're back on track and I hope to keep you guys up to speed from now on. I'm going to kick you guys back off where I left, which is right after I started roughing in electrical and I started trying to level the house. So I hope you enjoy the video and thanks for watching. I want to show you guys a little bit of what I did off camera. We got some of these blue switch and receptacle boxes and installed them in each of the rooms. We ended up installing each receptacle box at 12 inches above the finished floor and we pulled about six inches of extra wire into each box to allow us to easily hook up the new receptacles. Those silver plates you see on the front of the 2x4s are stud guards. And we put them there to prevent screws and nails from puncturing the wire since it's so close to the front of the 2x4. We decided where we wanted the receptacles in the bedrooms and pulled wire through to them as well. It looks really messy because we haven't tacked the wire into place, which will eventually tighten it up. Being a little bit stuck on the electrical for now until I can get my insulation guy to come suck out the attic insulation, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to something a little bit different. Yesterday I got a bottle jack and I'm gonna use it to lift up the floor joists. I got some treated lumber that I'm going to use as shims. I'm going to prop up the floor and set it down, hopefully making it level. If you look at the floor by the closet where the water heater sets, you'll notice that there's a giant depression in the floor. There's been way too much weight on this area of the house for too long and it eventually caused the entire thing to dip. That's enough talking for now. I'm going to suit up and we'll see if we can find something scary underneath the floor. I'm using 3 8 inch pressure treated fence pickets for my shims. You guys have no idea how much I've been dreading this moment. All right, you'll see that down there. That light is our destination. That's a, that's a little bit of a, of a crawl. We'll see if we can make it all the way down there without getting too squeezed. Let's go. This isn't an ordinary crawl space. This is a uh, special type. It's an army crawl space. You gotta uh, just stay on your belly the whole time. Uh, just inchworm your way down. Man, I'm getting impressed. Okay, yeah, see that column? That's the one we need to jack up. If you see this bow right past it, it needs to be leveled right there. And that joint, there's a seam that we have to, uh, support. Yeah, you can see that. That's the job. That is what we're trying to fix. All right. Well, let's move some dirt. In such a confined space underneath the house, there was no room for ordinary tools. I was forced to use a crowbar, sort of like a chisel, and a miniature gardening shovel in order to move the dirt. With the dirt being so tightly packed and not having gotten wet in so long, it was more like having to carve than actually dig. So where's the jack? Can I reach the jack? Oh, it's outside. Let's go back. Oh no. Come on little birdie. Let's get you back outside. It's okay, go this way. Go this way. You're okay, are you okay? Come here. Come here. Oh, your foot is stuck. Oh no. Oh no. There you go. There you go. Give me. Let me just get that. No, no, no. No, come here. Come here, you're okay. You're okay, you're okay. I'm saving you, I'm saving you. Come on. Ah, uh, no. 
Okay, okay, okay. Go. You're okay. You're okay. Here you go. Go on. Go on. You okay? Go on. Okay, don't don't come back inside. It's not it's not good for your health. Just be thankful I didn't eat you. Okay, let me be real with you for a second. You have no idea how frustrated I was when I saw this little fact. I spent 15 to 20 minutes underneath this house digging dirt with a crowbar because I didn't push the jack down all the way and I was too blind to see it when I was underneath the house. I, I really had no idea that I did that until I was reviewing this video, so there you go. Despite digging a needlessly deep hole for the footer of my jack, I was still able to get the beam lifted. When I measured the depth of the dip in the floor, it needed to be raised about half an inch. These shims were three-eighths of an inch, and that asphalt paper that was there was doing nothing. So I wanted to put one shim in, see how it had affected the floor, then determine if it needed a second one once I had a chance to go back up and measure. Okay, we are now going to let that rest. That is so nasty. I sat here like this for at least 30 minutes, questioning why I was doing this to myself. I was able to get not just one, but I was able to get a second post lifted. The first one, I noticed after the fact that one of the two by sixes that is making the bottom beam actually started doing this and uh, coming apart from the other one. So whenever I go back down there, I will have to put the jack under the one that did not stay connected, I guess, to the beam that is um, where it should be, I guess. And uh, push it back into place and screw it or nail it together. That way they'll stay together. For good. For at least the last 20 years, both the pressure tank and the hot water heater have sat in this closet. The weight of the water combined with the point load of the beam between the kitchen and the dining room is ultimately what caused the floor to be deflected downwards. I'm going to be moving the pressure tank to a different location and I'm going to replace the standard gas water heater with tankless. Oh look, I found the right tool. By making this upgrade, we're going to not only reduce the amount of weight that is on this point in the house, but we'll also gain an extra closet, which is valuable space in a house this size. By this point in the day, I was already tired and had a sour attitude from having to crawl underneath the house. I had reached the point where all the small little inconveniences really started throwing me off. I removed the water tank and then called it quits for the day. If you're enjoying this content, go ahead and like the video. If you want to follow this renovation from start to finish, I invite you to subscribe to the channel and I look forward to reading your comments below. I'm going to throw this tank in the yard, and I look forward to seeing you guys next time.